Hello everyone, this is Katie. Today I'm going to be giving you an intro in how to get started with the application Procreate. So firstly, what is Procreate? Procreate is a digital drawing and painting software that is primarily available on the Apple iPad. Um, unfortunately, if you have an Android device, a laptop, um, you're not able, going to be able to use this software. So it's purely for the Apple iPad. Um, I've got it on my iPad Pro, which is my the larger iPad, but you're equally able to use it on your standard small size iPad. You don't just need an iPad, you obviously need the application itself. It costs about $10. You'll also need an Apple Pencil here. Um, so I've got the generation two. If you've got an iPad, you just want to check online to see which version of the Apple Pencil that is compatible with your device. So please double check that before you go out and purchase um, your Apple Pencil. Um, what else do you need? So one thing I would recommend is a matte screen protector. Um, I've got a fairly cheap one that I purchased online. Um, it's not the paper light. I don't think you need that. Just if you just search for generic paper matte screen protector on somewhere like Amazon, you should be able to find something that would work absolutely fine. I will share a link to the name of the one that I use, but as far as I understand, they're pretty much much of a muchness. Other than that, you don't really need anything else. You, When you get started, you might get be tempted to buy things like brush packs, to pay money for tutorials, to buy textures and backgrounds. I would say if you're just getting started, hold off on doing any of those things. Actually, a lot of the, the native software and the native brushes you get with the software and a lot of the free tutorials that you can find on YouTube are going to be perfectly adequate to get you started. So um, how do you get started? So once you install the application on your iPad, um, you'll need to open it up. The first thing that you'll see once you get started is the home page. Um, you won't have as many files as I do here because obviously I've been working in it for some time. What you will get is a, a few examples of artwork that you can have a look at um, just to see the kind of outcome that you can get working, um, working with the software once you're more familiar with it. The first thing you want to do to get started is to, to open up your own canvas. You can do that by pressing the plus over here. Um, there is a few standard canvas sizes that you get once you once you start using the software and there's also the opportunity to create your own canvases. Um, but I'm just going to get started by using the screen size canvas and this is what I did for the first six months or so of using the software. Um, you can move the canvas around and rotate it by um, using the gesture with your hands. Um, I, yeah, so I just pivot it whichever way I want. If I want to do a portrait, I'll, I'll just switch around to portrait view. Um, and then what, what's really nice about this is if, you, if you're if you turning the iPad and you're working on it this way, um, it will the orientation will stay in the same direction so it doesn't automatically reorientate it. So that's really useful if you're kind of working on your lap and you're kind of moving the, the iPad around. So it's almost exactly like it would be if you had a piece of paper kind of stuck to a board. Um, so I talked about the turning gesture. You also have a zooming gesture. And if you watch any of my other videos, you'll know that's something I'd make the most of. Um, and so those are the two, two main kind of orientation gestures. I'll talk about some of the other gestures a little bit further along in this video uh, in a minute. So first of all, let me just get you orientated with some of the buttons and options around the screen. So first of all, we'll start with the top top right hand side. So this these brushes are for taking, applying and taking off paint and moving it around. I say paint, I mean kind of digital paint, colour, whatever you want to call it. So the first and most important one is the brush. Um, so you'll come with a, you know, if you click this this option here, you'll come with a bunch of um, native brushes. Um, looking at my screen here, I would say anything this upwards is not native. It's ones I've purchased or downloaded. Um, the native brushes are pretty much this sketching one here, all the way down to organic um, water is the native one as well. So anything with a little handy icon is one that's come auto, uh, which has come with the software itself. Um, in terms of getting started as a traditional artist, if you like doing um, pencil drawings, then you might want to head over to the sketching se section. These are all names pretty 
sensibly, I guess. So if you're looking for pencils, maybe you want to click on the HP pencil and so on. Um, in terms of if you like to achieve more of a paint effect, then head over to the painting section. The ones that I really like is the Nico Royal brush and another brush that's really good that's worth playing around with is the gouache brush. So those are a couple of really good brushes, but I would recommend that you kind of play with those yourself. Um, other brushes that might be useful, so if you like a very hyper smooth modern illustrative effect, then you might want to head over to the airbrushing section, which has got these very soft brushes. Um, and then other than that, there's a whole bunch of brushes and, and just sort of have a play and kind of experiment, I would say. Um, don't feel intimidated. You can really just get started with having, you know, the most close, the, the brush that's closest to the medium that you're used to. So I am primarily working in um, pencil or charcoal, but I also do a bit of oil painting as well. So some of the brushes that I like are the Procreate pencil brush, um, the HB pencil brush, and I also use the Bonobo chalk brush. Um, so those are the ones that I have. Um, let me just get started with um, one of the paintbrush though, because I think those are the ones that best demonstrate some of the aspects of the brush brushes themselves. So I'm going to pick the brown brush, round brush, which is a, a pretty standard brush. So once you're in the brush setting, you have a few options. So the first thing that you might want to do is look at the size of the brush. So you can see I've just I've just done a swipe here. Um, the brush at the moment is set around 25% I think there, but if I make it up to 100% you can see it gets really quite large. And then I can do it all the way down to a tiny, tiny little brush here. So these brushes have a big range of size. You can see the, the size range just by the, the size of the circle there as I um, bump the size up and down. Different brushes have different sizes. So let me just pick a new brush. Um, so if I'm gonna go over to the pencil brush, obviously, unsurprisingly, the difference in size isn't so significant. So that's on the largest size. And then if I bump it down to the smallest size, then you can see it gets quite small. So this button here is the undo and redo, so very useful. So let me just get rid of those so we've got a nice clean sheet. The other section is um, to go for the transparency. Now the transparency isn't something that I use very often. Um, the dynamics with the brush and the Apple Pencil that is so fantastic is it really matters the pressure that you put on the painting and the angle of your brush. So as an example, I've got this HB brush here. Just like if I'm drawing with a normal pencil, if I point my brush straight down and draw, I'm gonna get a very sharp, precise line. However, if I hold my Apple Pencil almost parallel to the, the paper and draw, I'm gonna get a very broad, or I guess not very broad, but comparatively broad line, just like if I were to hold my pencil and, and kind of draw from the side of the pencil. So it works in exactly the same manner. The other aspect is the pressure. So if I draw very hard, I get a very strong line. However, if I apply the pencil very lightly, I can also get a very transparent light line. So those are a couple of options and by pivoting the pressure that you put on through the pencil and the angle of the pencil, actually what you can get is you can achieve something that's really quite interesting and powerful once you've got a level over, of control over your brush. So I talked about this undo button here. I'm just gonna quickly show you another gesture. Two fingers, tap, and you undo your latest mark. So there you go, that's another gesture that's useful to remember. Um, so that's a little bit, so I, I talked about the transparency here. So obviously this is a pretty opaque, I, I'm, I'm holding my brush sideways and I'm putting up pressure, so I'm getting a pretty thick opaque line. Um, what I can do is I can bump the transparency down and then it really does, even if I press quite hard, it's applying a very soft line. Now I've got to be honest, I just don't use that because I've got enough power and control over my pencil that I can actually achieve exactly the same result just by applying less pressure. So I would say as you get more comfortable with the software and with the Apple Pencil, actually you'll probably find that you don't use this section as much. 
but still might be useful and it's good to know. So that's the pencil um, or the, the brush. So just like if as we do for a traditional medium, we just we don't just draw, right? So we don't just draw all the time. There's other things that we do. So the second thing we might do is erase. So that's why we go over here to the eraser. It's quite straightforward. It looks like a little rubber, as we call them in the UK, eraser in the US. Um, that's just going to erase off your marks. In terms of eraser options, you get exactly the same brushes as you do for your brush set. Just the same with the smudge brush that I'll talk about in a minute. One suggestion I would have just when you first get started is just to use the same brush for your eraser and for your brush. That way you'll get a very consistent approach to the way you're drawing. Um, but I would say that's something that over time, as maybe you get more comfortable with the brushes, you might find brushes that you like best as an eraser, brushes that you like best as a brush, and then brushes you like best for smudging. So, but just to get started, it might be worth just setting those two to be the same. Um, so there you go, that's my brush, and this is my eraser. So the third brush that is very useful is the smudge brush. So this is a smudge brush here, it looks like a finger, the idea being that you smudge with your finger. Um, in terms of the smudge brushes, I would suggest just to get started, perhaps picking one of the paint brushes, um, perhaps something like a gouache brush, just to get you started. Um, but you can see exactly what happens. You can, and why, by applying the, the smudge brush, you're just basically smudging your colours into each other. That was just the undo there. And again, the size of the brush dictates the size of the smudging. And also the amount of pressure you apply often dictates just how much the, the smudging, like, you know, just how much smudging there is as well. So this is me applying it quite lightly. So there's only a very marginal amount of texture going on there, or marginal amount of smudging. So you can see just between those three, you can get something that's really quite powerful. Um, majority of my drawings, I actually just do on one layer and I use those three brushes. So actually those just by using the smudge, the arrays and the brush, you can get some really you know, fascinating outputs. You can really do quite a lot, even with just the native brushes. So <clears throat> I would encourage you to use all three of them. Don't just draw an arrays, also use the smudge brush. Don't use one too much. So really try and balance smudging with drawing with erasing to get the best output. Um, but all three brushes are very useful. So that is your the three over here, which I would just say they're they're the kind of triumvirate. Triumvirate <laughs> is that the right word? Those are the three, you know, the trilogy of awesomeness. There you go. It's the trilogy of awesomeness. Those three there, they all go together. Um, two other very powerful and important things on the top right hand side. So the color, obviously very important. There is a few options for how you're going to choose the color. Everyone has their own preference. My preference is the classic here. So I think of it almost like I do a lot of painting. So I think of it the paint strings. All you do is you set the color that you wish to have along this first slider at the top. And then as for all, you know, depending on what the hue is, the tone is, you can select it just from the picture by picking it off, you know, what's the chroma you want. And you just choose the color you'd like to see. Um, just by pressing on the screen and there you go, your colour selected. It's as straightforward as that. And actually the majority of the colour picking I do is just purely by selecting it on this on this little pad here. I've become comfortable enough with it that I, I can just pick pretty much, you know, I see a colour and I can pretty much pick it um, from these colour wheels. There are some other colour wheels as well though. So, I mean, I would suggest you just sort of have a play around and see, you know, which ones that, work best for you um, and decide that way. <clears throat> but yes, this is my personal favourite. So once I've picked a colour that I like, um, I just literally will click off it and that colour will goes away and you can start applying the paint with that colour. Um, it does keep a history. So as you, you know, as you pick different colours and start drawing, it will keep a history of your most recent colour choices. Um, so you can go back to a colour you recently picked um, and that's actually quite useful although I tend not to use it so much. 
what I find a lot easier is to colour pick directly from the canvas. Now, so that's the other way of choosing a colour. If I've been working along for a while, and let's just go over to one of my paintings so you can see what I mean. So if I've been working on a colour picture, so this is a drawing I did with my husband, and I want to go in and tweak something, rather than having to, let's say that I wanted to just um, tweak this colour here and maybe bring it down a little bit, rather than having to go in and try and find that colour again, what you can do is colour pick directly from your canvas. The way you do that is to use one finger, hold it over the pan canvas. You can just keep moving it around until you get the, the exact colour you want. You can see there's a little cross right in the middle there. I don't know if you can see that, but um, there's a little cross in the middle and that's that's the the target for the colour you're choosing. But you can also see along the top, that's the colour you're choosing. Along the bo bottom is the prior colour or the current colour that you've, you've chosen as well. So you can just sort of see how it stacks up. But that's a way to pick directly from your canvas. Um, and choose the colour that you wish to carry on working with. So that's just another way of selecting colours. The third way of selecting colours is to use preloaded palettes. Um, sometimes there'll be some that come automatically with the software. There's others you can you can sample palettes in various different ways. I'm not going to go into that because personally I don't find it useful and I don't use it. So um, I'm just not going to address it in this session. There's so much more to cover. Um, but I mean, you could just do a whole video session just on selecting colour um, and I won't. But there you go. So that's colour. Um, in terms of, so I think as a traditional artist, choosing colour, applying paint, smudging, erasing, all of those things are probably concepts that you're very familiar with. What you probably aren't so familiar with is the concept of layers. Now you need to think of layers as almost um, transparent layers of glass and each layer of glass has something applied to it a paint you know it's got a background it's got a little bit of drawing and those layers are stacked on top of each other and they're stacked on top of each other in the order you can see them here i'm just going to zip over to maybe a drawing where i have got a few layers so you can see what i'm talking about um so this is an example here of a drawing i did another drawing i did of my husband i don't just draw my husband i draw a lot of other people and things as well um, so in this case, I've got a number of layers going on. Um, I'm just going to hide this layer at the moment and forget it. So I don't really want to overcomplicate things. But in drawing my husband here, I have got several layers going on. You've got the automatic background layer, which I don't tend to touch. I've got one layer where I built up a bit of a background colour and texture. So that's my background layer. Um, I've got a sketch layer where I drew... A picture of my husband just kind of a rough block in trying to figure out where everything is and then I've got the layer where I did an initial pass of the drawing um, and I think this is just drawing for 20 or 30 minutes just to figure out where everything is and then I've got a final layer where I came in again and fixed some of the elements that I saw weren't really working and instead of carrying on working that on a previous layer I created a new layer to work it on so again, in those four scenarios, you can think of it almost like as four layers of glass. So each layer, background layer, sketch layer, initial pass layer, final pass layer. They're all layers that sit on top of each other and are independent. So you can turn layers on and off to give yourself weird results. Um, you can copy layers, you can move them around, you can merge layers. So layers are something that is very powerful. Layers can also spin out of control very quickly. I, I think I, I would suggest that as you get started, try and keep as few layers as possible. Um, I Sometimes it's it's tempting to create new layers when you're kind of being experimental. But I mean, just practice keeping your layers quite compact, at least when you first start start kind of working Procreate. Um, but also don't worry if things get out of control. I mean, it's fine. These things happen. Um, we can't always be perfect and tidy, and I think a lot of artists are pretty messy, me included. So I wouldn't worry too much if, if things do get out of control. Um, in terms of what you need to know about layers, again, it's like colours. I could go on for ages. I'll try and just give you a few top tips that I personally find very useful. Um, so first of all, how to switch layers on and off. It's very simple. You just tick the yeah, the, the tick and that will turn them on and off. The other thing you can do, which I think is very powerful, is you can change the opacity of a layer. 
So I'm going from very opaque to very transparent. And that's just a slow transition where I'm, I'm kind of tweaking the opacity of the layer. So you can actually set one of your layers to be fairly opaque if you wanted to. So let's say as an example, in this drawing where it might make sense to be opaque is I'm working on my initial sketch. Maybe I just want to dial that background down a bit. I don't really want to turn it off altogether because maybe drawing on white background is quite intimidating. I just want to dial it down a little bit. So that's quite useful. And I'll show you, if you watch any of my videos, you say, I see, I really like to overlay photo references to check accuracy. That's when tweaking the opacity becomes very important. Um, the other thing that's quite useful is how to manipulate and organize your layers. If you want to move a layer, you just need to press it and hold it, and then you'll be able to move it up and down. Um, the layers, like as I told you, they're panes of glass. So obviously if you take a paint, if you take a layer here, and you move it on top of the other layer, then it's gonna give you a completely different look. So just be careful about moving your layers down around when you, you know, when you're working with them. Um, the other thing that's quite useful is to group layers. So if your your layers get all out of control, you've got loads and loads of layers, you can organize them into folders, exactly as I've done here, or groups. The way you can organize layers into groups is, let's just say I want to select these three layers here and group them together. All I need to do is click on the first layer, Swipe right until I've selected all of the layers that I want to group. Click group and there you go, they're all grouped together. What you can then do as well, which is also quite useful, is you can duplicate that loop group or you can lock that group. So let's just say I have, you know, I've created this drawing. I'm really happy with the way it looks. I want to go and do something like merge my layers or I want to do something really crazy with all my drawings. So I just want to have a copy of where I am at this point in time. So if you group all your layers together and you duplicate them, then you've created a copy of all of your artwork and you've kept it all whole in those different layers. So so that's just a really quick and easy way of, I guess every time you've, you've got to a point where you're happy with your work or every time you take a break, Maybe it's worth just grouping at layers, duplicating them, and then just keeping them as almost backup of that's where I was at this point in time. So that way, if something does go terribly wrong and you really want to, to go all the way back, um, then you've got that backup of those layers there that are, are waiting for you to go back to if you need them. So the final thing that is really useful with layers is merging them. So um, again, my sometimes when I... I do like to work in one or two layers, so sometimes when I'm adding lots of additional layers, I like to tidy them all up and just group them into one. Obviously, there's if you're kind of merging all the layers into one, you're kind of sticking all those panes of glass together with super glue. You know, they're together, they're not coming apart again. You've lost maybe some of the nuances of something that was on this layer, which is now covered up by a new layer with the drawing on it. If you merge them together, that that's gone. So, which is why I would suggest taking a copy of the layers before you create a new group um but let's say i you know i've done that drawing i'm really happy with it i want to go in and mess around with my drawing um so what i can do is create a, a copy of that i can group those layers together create a copy and then what i can do is once i've done that i can then go in and merge my layers um, the quickest way to merge all your layers is just to pinch top to bottom oops sorry i did that a bit slowly and pinch them together. And there you go, I've merged all those layers together. So instead of being across four layers, they're just now on one single layer and it just becomes a lot easier to manipulate. Um, so that's layers. I'd say when I first started working with digital art, they completely blew my mind. I didn't really get them. I would just say if it seems overwhelming, just don't worry about them too much. You'll get used to it, I promise. Um, it just takes the time for you to adjust. It's just like driving a car. It's not gonna, you're not gonna find everything easy straight away, no matter how many videos you watch. You just need to do the work of practicing and eventually it'll just click and you won't even think about it anymore. Um, on some of the videos I, I can see, I, I remember when I first started and it was just really overwhelming trying to learn about layers, but now I just do it almost without thinking. So um, I promise you'll get there as well if you, you carry on practicing. So all that chatting, and I've only covered the top <laughs> five um, buttons in the top corner. So what else do you really need to know? Um, so let's go over to the left-hand side. Um, I'll just try and pick out the ones that I think are most important. 
again I can spend forever talking about all the different nuances in these but I just don't think it's necessary as a beginner um, so starting off with the actions tab um, so the actions tab is your little screw uh, screwdriver there's not screwdriver your spanner um, over there so <clears throat> what's very useful in there so canvas is useful so a lot of us work with reference pictures. Um, there's a couple of ways to get a reference picture and use a reference picture in your drawing. The one that I like the best is to work with a split screen. To, in order to do a split screen, I mean, the way it works on my iPad is I have to pull the this um, navigation bar up from the bottom. And then if I press on this and drag it across, it will give me the split screen. And then I can start working off of a photo reference. I can make the photo reference smaller just by making the split screen smaller. So that's one way to work from a photo reference. The second way, and this is the way I prefer personally, but different folks, different strokes. The other way to work from a reference is to use the, the reference picture option in the canvas settings there. Um, then you can pick your own image that you want to work from. You can see I took a picture of my husband here that I was working from. But if you want to pick another image, you just import your image and you just pick the picture that you want to work from. And there you go. It's ready for you to use and start working from. Um, I personally find this a little bit annoying. I don't know what it is about it, but having it as a floating canvas bugs me a little bit. I think it's just me. I know a lot of people love it. Um, you can resize it, you can change the orientation and zoom in and out. So it is, it's pretty powerful. Another very powerful thing is you can color pick. So just like I was showing you, you can color pick from the picture here on the left hand side. You can also color pick from your reference picture. Um, I almost don't like that about it though. I'm going to be honest because I think it makes it too easy for you to cheat. And I know that personally color picking is something that I've had to work with really hard on getting right color mixing and color picking and color recognition and I find if I've got the picture here again it makes it too easy for me to cheat so I just really don't like using it or doing it but that's just personally me I think if I was an artist doing commission I probably would have it there just because I'd want to maybe get the, the colors a bit more accurate but I mean and you know there's only so many things that we can work on at once. So yes, that it, it's useful to have it there. It's great to be able to color pick from a reference picture if you do struggle with color. Um, so yeah, just something to, that's worth knowing about and a useful um, feature of the software. Other things um, that are key and useful here um, is the, the way to export or share your videos. If you want to export a picture, then you can do that by clicking on the share pick the JPEG or the PNG formats, and that, that will automatically export a copy of your picture to your camera reel. The other thing you can do is export a time-lapse video. The fantastic thing about Procreate is it automatically has a time-lapse replay or time-lapse that it captures of your drawing. So you can go back anytime and look at your artwork and see how it was created, sped up. Um, you can, fast forward and rewind the replay by swiping left and right uh, but what you can also do which I think is fantastic and I use all the time is you can export that video um, and share it on social media so I do this all the time and I share it on um, Instagram I would suggest going for the 30 second export because that's all you need really um, to put on Instagram and it means that the end of the video won't be cut off but that will save that video to your camera reel just like it would for the photograph so both of those things are fantastic for sharing your work on on instagram or social media wherever you want to share it so those i guess are the main things that i would suggest from from this spanner section the other ones that i would like to add is on the adjustments tab so this is my magic wand my favorite thing here is liquify um, that's just worth a discussion all by itself. What Liquify can do is it can allow you to pull and move around things in your picture. Um, it only works on a single layer, so this is one reason why you want might want to merge your layer um, before you start working with Liquify. But I think when you're doing a portrait, it, what you might do is you might get close to the end and realise, oh dear, the eye's in the wrong place. 
and having liquify it just allows you to bump things around and not lose the amount of work you've put in and building up the colour, you know, building up everything else in your drawing. So that's just a really fantastic tool. I have it always set at push and you can set the size of the ball. So if you're moving something very, very small, like maybe the corner of my husband's nose, then you maybe want to set that size very small. If you want to move something large, like his whole head, then you obviously set it larger. But um, that's just how you use liquify and play around with it. <clears throat> Again, there's lots of other things here that are really useful. I just don't think you need to know them as a beginner um, and maybe you'll get get onto it as you get into the more advanced features. I would say the only thing out of this list that I ever use nowadays is liquify. Um, the other thing that's very useful is the select option. So if you just click this um, S, it looks like a tape measure. I'm not quite sure why that means select, but yes, this little S here, that's your select tool. This will allow you to choose a certain area, which you can do just by drawing. You can also take your brush off and just press and that will like join up the dots and selecting a certain area. And to close off that area, you just click on that circle, it closes off your area. I've now selected my husband's face and everything else is deselected. You can go ahead and select multiple areas. Let's just say I want to select all of his skin so I could then go and select his arms as well. And there you go. So now all I've got is selected his face and his arms. Everything else is deselected. Then if I wanted to go in and um, paint in pink, then I could do, and what it will do is if I draw on the picture, it will only apply the colour and the line to the section I've got selected, every other selection, every other section, sorry, will remain as it is. It's, it's not selected, you can't do anything to it. So that's quite useful in sometimes building up some really interesting textures and tones. You can see here on his arm I've, I've got some kind of really jagged interesting shapes. So what I've done is exactly that. I've gone in, I've selected some cool shapes like this, and then I've come in with a big brush and just kind of stamped on some texture. So the select brush, the select tool is very useful. It also allows you to do things like move sections around as well. So let's see, I, I realise that I've put his head in completely the wrong place. So what you could do is select the head, then use the, this tool here, which is the move tool, and then just go ahead and move that around. Um, so I would say that it's not something I use so much, the select tool, but I think it's just something that's worth knowing because you might find you use it more than me and it's just handy to know. So that was a really whistle-stop tour. I apologise if I've completely blown your mind. Um, I just kind of wanted to get you started on the orientation, things you need to know. I think that's pretty much it to get started. Hopefully this has been useful. I would say the last thing that I would add that is really quite useful is the three swipe down. Um, that's if you want to select, um, select and copy and paste layers. That was just something that I didn't know about, which was really useful. So let's just say that where it might come useful is I want to bring in a paper texture or some element from another drawing and move it across to a new drawing. So here's a paper texture that I created. I want to go ahead and use that for another drawing. I can press this button here, which is the, the select tool, swipe down with three fingers and I can copy that layer. Um, I'm not sure if that's quite useful, but I think that's something that it took me a while to figure out. And then when I did, I was like, oh, thank goodness I found out how to do that because it was really annoying not knowing. So. So yeah, that's the, the, the last gesture I would add to the gesture pile. So I hope this was useful. I know it's been really quick and I've just kind of raced along. I think it can seem a bit um, overwhelming at first, but I would and, and just be comfortable with not knowing everything and finding a few things completely baffling at first. There is some really great videos out there. So if you search for Introduction to Procreate, there's other people that have done videos as well. So watch a few of the videos. Different people might have different tips. Um, my other recommendation would to be to start doing some tutorials. Um, I find the sketchy ones really useful. I'll put a link in the 
the comments below. That's how I got started on doing drawing. Um, that's just what you, all you're doing is just you sign up and you get 30 lessons done by usually between 10 and 15 different artists. And they're just hour long lessons filmed in real time um, of portraits and you can just follow along with them. And I learned a huge amount doing that. So I would actually recommend that as if you're brand new and you do like doing portraits, that's a really good way to get started. But other than that, I mean, obviously sketch is something you have to pay for, unfortunately, but it's not very expensive. It's about 50 bucks. Um, but other than that, there's loads of amazing videos on YouTube. Sometimes you have to kind of spend a bit of time finding them. But I think once you find a few good um, tutors on YouTube, then you're kind of away, really. And you've got lots of resources at your fingertips in order to improve. Um, so that's it. I hope you found this video useful. Um, comment below if there's anything I've missed out or isn't clear. Um, I know this is a bit overwhelming. Feel free to watch the video a few times, watch some of my other tutorials, but most of all, just start practicing and having fun. You will get it, I promise. And it's such a great resource. This comes everywhere with me. I draw on the train. I draw in life drawing. I paint. I absolutely love it. It's not messy. It's nice and easy to use. I can draw on the sofa. I would say it's worth the investment in getting used to it because it does really help your art practice in other areas as well. So it's really sped up my ability to draw, to paint. It's absolutely fantastic. And I feel very lucky that I can afford to, to have the iPad and use the software. I'm a very lucky person. I think it's fantastic. Um, and I would really encourage other people to use it and make the best of it um, and really have lots of fun. So have a good day, everyone. I hope we'll speak soon. Bye-bye.